Now we've had numerous accounts throughout the book, Alien Base, where people have come forward and claimed to have spoken, interacted if you will, with extraterrestrials, but none more uh, fantastic, I suppose, um, than a certain gentleman who was a former equerry to the Queen. Yeah, right. Peter Air, Horsley. Air Marshal Sir Peter Horsley, yes. I mean, this is an incredible story, but, you know, someone like that who is so credible, I interviewed him, he must have been very highly vetted to get the job of equerry to the Queen and Prince Philip. He's flown 90 different types of aircraft, from the Spitfire to the Vulcan bomber, Deputy Chief of Strike Command, for heaven's sakes. You can't get much higher than that. And here's a man who insists that he met an apparently extraterrestrial human being with whom he was, who, who was able to read his mind. He didn't have to formulate um, his questions with his voice. The questions were answered for him. How can we discount, dismiss stories like that? We can dismiss Adamski and Menja, if you like, um, but I don't think we can dismiss someone like him. When obvious question surfaces, he's talking about extraordinary events from the mid-50s. It's taken him the best part of 45 years to come forward, albeit through his autobiography, um, to recount these details. What explanation did he give you when you personally interviewed the man? Well, first of all, he didn't give me an explanation, and I didn't ask him. I only uh, I said to him, it, it, it's very brave of you to come out with this story, sure. Sir Peter. And he said, it's not brave. It, I simply recount what happened. But I am assuming, I didn't feel the need to answer the question, I am assuming that there's no way he could have come out with that story publicly when he was serving, you know, at Buckingham Palace. There's no way he could have come out with such a story while acting as Deputy Chief of Strike Command or flying Vulcan bombers, for heaven's sakes. So but it's only in his retirement that he's felt, yes. give, felt the freedom to come forward. But even so, I mean, assuming, for instance, that the man retired at 60, or indeed 65, we're still talking about 15 to 20 years for him to impart that information. Well, Doesn't he, that strike you as odd? Well, to impart it publicly, it doesn't strike me as odd, no. I've come across many other people. Um, even the contactee whom I refer to as Joel, whom I've known since 1952, didn't even want me to write up her story after her death, and she died a few years ago. So in a certain sense, I'm acting against her, her, her last wishes. Early in his career, when he was a young worker at Buckingham Palace, he became interested in UFOs. I was working in the palace at the time, and we all discussed it. Prince Philip, uh, General Browning, we all discussed it, sometimes jokingly, sometimes quite seriously. And I think Prince Philip was very open-minded about the whole subject. And I suggested one day that I should do a little research into it. He was absolutely fine. He said, don't bring any adverse publicity on the palace, obviously. Don't become a crank about it. Go ahead, uh, inquire into it. 